So last night, I decided to watch some like scary movies, um, and because Halloween's coming up, so you would think you know Halloween time, watch something scary. Just you know it's that that time of year. But little did I know, whatever anything that I watch would not be as scary as watching a Pete Carmichael offensive play calling game. Um, so that was more scary than anything I could actually even imagine. So um, back to football, that shit was fucking funny, hilarious, and um, not entertaining to say the least. My honest reaction to this game, if you guys want to know my honest reaction, here you go. Welcome back to the Hoodats pod, everyone. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to continue to see me go through pain and suffering um, as the Saints now will make our pain and suffering end a little bit quicker this week when they play the Jacksonville Jaguars on a Thursday and we'll have a stress-free Sunday a week from now. But in the meantime, let's talk about this loss that they just suffered against the Houston Texans on the road. It was pretty ugly from start to finish in every single phase. So first things first, let's just talk about the offense. That's going to be the main talking point coming into this week. They just had a 34-0 victory over the Patriots. Yay, that's cool. Need to see more consistency before we can believe that the Saints have made changes, that Pete Carmichael can be a good play caller. And what do you know? He laid a fat ass egg and shit the bed. But it wasn't just all P. Carmichael. There's other factors other factors as well as to why the Saints just couldn't execute. Like for example, that fourth down and four, you know, when they're in the Texans territory, like red zone, um, and they didn't get it, that check down to Camara, yeah, the play call maybe could have been better, but also Derek Carr checked it down to Alvin Camara. But then, as well, I'm not just trying to take blame off of Pete. He had a really bad play call. It was like third down and four, third down and six, and he called a screen to Alvin Kamara or like kind of like a bubble screen, and he was out at receiver. I'm not mad at trying to throw a screen to Kamara, but maybe do it on first or second down, not third down, and you got to get past the sticks. Did not like, I don't know if it was play calling or Derek Carr's choice, but at the end of the game, instead of trying to get the first down, you still have a timeout with like 30 seconds left. You take four straight shots to the end zone, one that went out of bounds, one that went too far. Sorry, sorry about that. And then we just mute that. One that went too far ahead of Thomas and also kind of out of bounds. Another one where Shahid and Carr had some miscommunication maybe on what shoulder to go to. And another one that went to Thomas and it was just kind of a bad pass. I don't know if the plays were just called four verticals go for the touchdown or if Carr just chose to throw those, but... Either way, it wasn't good. This game isn't just on Pete Carmichael, and I'm not going to blame Dennis Allen, but it is his team, so he does have fault. It is, it's on everyone, players included. Um, Pete Carmichael is making a huge comeback from, you know, you know he's bad and then good, and now he's back. He's back to sucking ass. Okay, so play calling's back, but I'll give some props here. The tight end position got more involved today than they have all season. Taysom Hill and Foster Moreau had like eight catches combined from the tight end spot. I don't even think our tight ends had eight catches going into this game. So, I mean, people were complaining that the tight ends need to be more involved. They get the tight ends involved, and then people complain that no one else is getting involved. So, um, you can't, I guess you can't win in certain situations. Would have liked to see Michael Thomas get the ball a little bit more. Um, mainly because, you know, he had two really good catches in the first half, two very high traffic catches, and then you go away from him basically until the fourth quarter. Like, why are you not throwing slants to Michael Thomas? It is a cheat code play. It's a guaranteed seven yards basically every time. If you're in third and four, a slant to Michael Thomas is probably a first down. You're in third and seven, a slant to Michael Thomas might just do it. I don't know why it's so hard to maybe call a slant for michael thomas or get him over the middle and also don't get why it's so hard for Derek carr to maybe look his way now i speaking of Derek carr he had his moments his bad moments his good moments but this is probably the best game he's played as a saint this season it's been hard to evaluate really how good or bad he's been playing because the first two and a half weeks offensive line didn't help him at all came back had a 
really bad game against Tampa Bay. Whether it was the shoulder or not, it was just a really bad game. Had a, had a pretty good game against the Patriots last week. Comes in here, throws her 350 yards, has a good game, a touchdown. But he did have his moments. There's still some miscommunication stuff. He had a bad miss to Rashid Shahid, which almost was picked off. He had a bad pass to Michael Thomas, or at least it looked like to Michael Thomas, which resulted in a intentional grounding. So they're still figuring things out. Derek Carr just had his best game as a Saint. It doesn't matter because the Saints lost. So now him and P. Carmichael and Dennis Allen are going to take all the heat, even though it may not necessarily be his fault, even though there was some things that he probably could have done better. Um, but like I said, I didn't understand the play calling at the end of the game. I didn't understand. I thought it was okay basically throughout the game. I know people were frustrated. I thought he had a few bad calls. And then as the game went further and went further on, it just got worse and worse. And the Saints just... <laughs> What continues to get worse and worse is every time they get in the red zone. They start drives up. They get things going. They start to look good. They get in the Houston's territory. They start to get in the red zone. And then they get penalties or they, uh, allow sacks. And then now you're attempting field goals, which aren't going to be made. For the final four drives the Saints had in this game ended at the Texans' 27-yard line, the Texans' 11, the Texans' 15-yard line, and the 24-yard line. So... One of them was a missed kick, one of them was a made kick, one of them was turnover on downs, and the other one, the final one, was a turnover on downs. If Blake Groupie makes those two kicks early, I'm not blaming him for the missed 52-yarder. It was just barely missed, 50-yard plus misses. Uh, I'm not going to really, really like, hound on the guy for missing 50-plus yards, but the 30-yard kick or whatever he missed was unacceptable. That's the, I believe the commentator said, that is the 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 shortest yardage kick missed the season so things have to be fixed Blake Groupie just had his worst game of his career and needs to bounce back on the short week against Jacksonville offensive line uh, before okay before we talk about the offensive line play Saints come coming into this week went to start with James Hurst at left tackle Andres Pete at left guard they made a change Trevor Penning wasn't playing the way he was supposed to. Okay, I don't agree with it, but hey, if you think it's better for the team, it's better for the team. They go in there, a huge reason why probably they wanted to put Hurst that left tackle is to get the running game going so they can run more to the left because they haven't been able to do that. Guess what? The first time they run the football, both James Hurst and Max Garcia, who are starting at left guard, both blow blocks and it's a tackle for a loss. Then the next play, they both give up a pressure. Card gets it out before he can get sacked. I do not agree. I did not agree with benching Penning and putting Max Garcia because now you have two completely different offensive linemen than you've been having the whole season. As opposed to put Penning at left tackle and put maybe Pete at left guard. Maybe Pete can maybe help out with the running game. Pete was just a backup today. He had like a groin injury or some shit like that. So either way, it wasn't good. So, let's talk about the offensive line struggles. They struggled a lot. Trevor Penning had a bad game. I think everyone basically had a bad game. Um, and a big reason why they're allowing so much pressures and blitzes is because when the Saints got into third and manageable or third and situations, penalties and sacks to the plays before set them up for third and long, and the Texans would just blitz like seven to eight people. Carr would only have about two seconds to throw the football. And what would you know? They're all running four verts, so he can't make a quick pass to Alave or Shahid and let them get yards after the catch. And that's why the offensive line was just not playing very good. They're having issues. This is still better than what we saw weeks one, two, and three. But they did take a decline from what we've seen the past two weeks against the Patriots and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Saints in the red zone went 0 for 3. They had the turnover on downs, a missed kick. And I guess you, I guess they went one for three. They did make a field goal in the red zone territory, but uh, the stat sheet had that as zero for three. But man, this this game offensively just wasn't it. It felt like they started to get things going, and the further they got downfield, and the more momentum they started to get, then they took two steps back, one step forward, two steps back. You get to the twenty yard line, and then you get a penalty or a sack. You get in the red zone, and then you miss a kick. You get downfield, and you check it down on fourth down. It's just a whole 
a lot of just confusion it's like i said it's not just on the coaches it is on the players as well it's on the blocking the reads not winning matchups effort whatever it is i know it's it's not just the coaching but something needs to change dennis allen in his press conference let me pull up the quote exactly but in his press conference he kind of hinted that maybe a change is coming. I know we said this the last time that the Saints lost, but he clearly hinted that they might be making a change. Uh, where's the quote? So Dennis Allen said, "If we're not executing our jobs, then we're got then we're gonna find someone else." So I don't know. Take that for what it is. Take that for what you believe it is. But it could be maybe an offensive play caller change now. Let's talk about that. I don't think the Saints are going to change play callers or OCs this week, mainly because it is a short week going into Jacksonville. But if they do, great. Now, if they lose to Jacksonville and they have a very similar game as today, that is the perfect time to change offensive coordinators or play callers. Because guess what? Now you just lost to Jacksonville and you have 11 days to your next game. You have three to four days to make that change. Get maybe probably Ronald Curry prepared be like, Hey, you're calling plays this upcoming week. Figure out some stuff you want to get get um, involved in this offensive scheme, and we'll move on from here. You have th you have Friday, Saturday, Sunday to kind of get ready, get Ronald Curry some stuff to maybe think about, and then you have the whole week of preparation. So, I want the Saints to make a change at offensive coordinator. I I still wanted them to make one after the Patriots game. But I didn't believe this offense had changed. I just thought maybe they played a bad team and they did what they were supposed to do. And that's exactly what it was. The Saints beat the Raiders last year, twenty-four to zero. Then they have a, then they drop an egg against the Ravens the next week, lost twenty-seven to thirteen. So, um, I don't know if they make a play caller change this week, mainly because it's a short week. But maybe after this Jags game, depending on how that goes, they will make a change. We'll have to see how that continues to go. I have really no insight on that situation right now. The game ended like. 30 minutes ago so um but we'll definitely keep you guys updated throughout the week and see if any of that stuff does change now let's flip over to the defensive side for the saints first half was terrible first half the saints just they were just getting beat everywhere they couldn't stop the run they couldn't tackle very well marshawn Lattimore was getting beat probably he played his worst game of the season got penalized for pi um pressure the front seven front four just wasn't doing their job and the Texans put up 17 points in the first half. Second half, defense lights out. Three points. I believe the Saints had like double the time possession, double the yards, and a whole bunch of other shit in the second half. Better than the Texans. And yet they still lost because they can't execute when they get in the red zone. And they can't execute on third down in situational plays. They're good on first, second down. They're good at getting downfield. But when it comes to making plays happen, when it matters most, they just weren't able to do that. Lattimore feels like whenever Lattimore plays good, this defense is lights out. Whenever Lattimore is having an off game, this defense becomes shit. He was having a terrible game, had a terrible start, and then kind of clean, cleaned up things as the game went on. Second half for sure, Lattimore uh, played better, but he was still, that first half was really bad. They didn't get any sacks in the first half, didn't really have any production anywhere other than that Zach Bond interception which resulted in a fumble recovery for the Texans it's just weird to think that there are so many things in this game that could have went the other way but they didn't and the Saints couldn't execute on them they get a pick if Zach Bond doesn't fumble the Texans probably don't score a touchdown now it's 13 to 13 Blake Groupie makes one of his kicks if he makes both of them guess what uh, 16 or 19 to 20 the Saints can kick field goals in those other possessions and now you're up uh, 25 to 20 or something like that there's just a whole lot of different little things that add up into being one big thing and then it just creates chaos for this team and I'm sure this team when they look back at the film and when we do go over it this week we're gonna try and get that out super early this week by the way but when we go over this film there's going to be a lot of stuff left on the field there's a lot of stuff left on the field against the patriots last week and they just didn't clean them up they played a much better team they played a defense that was not the best but they played a team that's very well coached and the saints on paper are better than the texans but the texans have better coaching staff they set their players up for success more and that's the result of that kind of game 
in those kind of just, I don't know, matchups. The Saints, all of the Saints losses this season besides the Tampa Bay game, the Saints should have won. They're better than them on paper, but they just got out coached and the offense couldn't really execute Packers game. All they needed was a few first downs. Their roster was much better than the Packers and they couldn't do that. Bucks lost. We just got our ass kicked. And then the pass game against the Texans, out coached. And also just offense not being able to execute in important situations such as the red zone was not this is not ideal. After going basically three three for three in the red zone last week to going one for three or zero oh and three, depending on how you want to look at it, is a huge step back. It's always one step forward, one step, two steps back with Pete Carmichael and I guess Dennis Allen in some scenario. I'm not. I know a lot of people hate Dennis Allen. I'm not on that train yet. So, but I can see where the. Um, I can see where the disappointment is at. So I'm I'm mutual. Now special teams it costed this team just as much. They just weren't effective in any phase of the game today. Rashid Shahid let a ball bounce and they pinned him back in their own five. Then they punted and I believe that drive that punt set the Texans up at midfield. Bad punt, short yardage field. I believe they scored a touchdown on that drive. We, all because it went back to Rashid Shahid not taking out a punt when he had a lot of yards. We'll have to look at the film, but he probably could have gotten quite a bit of yards, and it resulted in the Saints having the ball inside their own five-yard line. Uh, we already went over Blake Groupie missed kicks. If he makes one of those kicks, if he makes both of them, the Saints are in a much better position to win this game. Instead, he doesn't, and it's unfortunate. This is probably this is the worst game of his NFL career. That missed kick against Green Bay, I didn't blame him for it. It felt like that game was over before he even missed that kick. Today was just on him. Don't blame him for missing 52-yarder kick, but he got to make the 30-yard kick, and he didn't. It was just two very one really bad kick and one super like not it wasn't bad. It was close, but either way, wasn't good. Texan special teams and was able to just dominate and be better than the Saints special teams, and that kind of stuff matters. So let's talk about some of the positives, I guess, from this game. Just players and whatever that are trending up, players who had a good performance. Let's start with Carl Granderson. Six tackles, two tackles for a loss in the sack. He was getting the first half. I was like, what is Carl Granderson doing? He is not being very productive right now. But... He was able to turn around, had a huge tackle for a loss in the red zone to help a goal line, to help the Saints defense have a goal line stand. Had a huge sack on C.J. Stroud, which set the defense up for success to stop him on third and fourth down. So he had a huge game. He was probably the best player on the team today. Or if you're going to give them a player of the game, it would probably go to Carl Granderson. Um, offensively, let's switch over to the offense. I gave this one to... Chris Olave had two very disappointing weeks these past two uh, the past two weeks. One catch for four yards against the Buccaneers, two catches for twelve yards and a touchdown against the Patriots. Three very bad plays that he could have made against the Patriots. Coming into this game, that first half, it looked like it was going to be the same thing. We're not getting him involved. That play before halftime, it looked like he wasn't showing any effort. I think. He just didn't see the ball until last second, but he needs to be looking for the ball the whole play, or at least half of it, not just last second. Uh, but I thought he had a good game. Seven receptions, 96 yards, had a really good contested physical catch. That's something that he has not been able to do these past two weeks. He did it very well the first two, three games, has not been able to do it the past two weeks, but he was able to make that really nice kind of like contested head-top catch over the Texans defender. So props to him, I thought. He had a much better game. The effort was there. And there was a play where he was being like, the play was over and the Texans were still like trying to tackle him. And he showed a little bit of fight, showed some energy and good because he was getting a lot of people's nerves. He wasn't showing effort, just kind of, he's, he's not getting the ball. He doesn't want to play, doesn't want to get open. I thought the effort was there today and it showed up. Seven catches for 96 yards is a nice uh, little stat line there and the final thing i'm just gonna say the tight ends had a good game i don't know if you consider Taysom hill a tight end but he had seven receptions for 49 yards foster morrow had four catches for 33 yards so the tight ends had 11 catches for 72 yards today i'd say 
maybe the yardage is a little low but the usage of tight ends is definitely better than what we've been seeing that's definitely a lot better than probably the other five games all combined so people wanted tight ends more involved they got the tight ends more involved but it doesn't matter because well the saints lost and i don't blame them because it's a little frustrating this is a team they probably should have beat but i had a bad feeling about this game i don't know if whoever's watching this saw my preview i was like i think the texans are gonna win i have a bad feeling about this game i think the texans defense and the way they're being coached the way they run their offense it's just felt like kryptonite for what the saints team is trying to do and i was somewhat right um now let's just flip over to the players who are trending down players who just had a shitty game number one blake groupie i think you all saw this one coming needs to be better this is the worst game he's ever had um he missed more kicks today than he's missed all season. It was like 11 of 12, 10 of 11 coming into this game. Had his best week last week against the Patriots. Won NFC player, NFC special teams player of the week. Comes into the Houston game and goes one for three. Missing a 52-yarder and I believe it was a 36, 30-yard kick. It just can't happen. So Blake Groupie, for the first time ever, is on the trending down list. Number two, Marshawn Lattimore. He just was not on his a game today and i know he got stuff cleaned up in the second half i know he was better as the game went on later throughout the game but he just he can't be playing like that if this defense wants to be what it is if this team wants to be what they think they are even though we may not agree if this team believes that they are a playoff team a contending team a team that can win football games marshall Lattimore has to be on his a game and he was struggling to cover guys like noah brown and nico collins that's no diss to them. I know Nico Collins is having a pretty good year. But if Marshawn Lattimore wants to be one of the best in the NFL and consider NFL great, like he says he wants to, he's got to be able to stop those guys. So Marshawn Lattimore is on this list for the first time, I believe, this season. I think I put him on, um, I put him, on, I believe, on an honorable mention trending down list sometime in the past few games. But um he finds himself for sure on this week's list and the final one is the offensive line slash penalties too many holding penalties trevor penning getting beat ryan ramchek um went out of the game you had caesar ruiz playing right tackle nicks out a very at right guard uh, max garcia at left guard it was just a whole disaster play a whole disastrous game houston was just blitzing on third and long situations because penalties and sacks put them in those situations and it just wasn't it and you could tell Derek Carr was a little frustrated he didn't trust this offensive line he was getting the ball there's one specific play they're backed up in their own five they called a screen to Camara on third and down and 11 and Carr got the ball out like too fast and it ended up being incomplete so offensive line and the penalties are definitely on the trending down list so before we um, kind of conclude this episode let's talk about that final drive again looks like the saints were starting to get things going they had some nice quick passes got stuff going used their timeouts had a decent amount of time and then they got <laughs> almost in the red zone not exactly in the red zone but almost in the red zone and they folded they called four verts the houston was bling- bringing blitzes and man coverage what could the saints have done better well one not run four verts every time If they're blitzing, you still have a timeout. You have 30 seconds left and four plays to get 10 yards. You could run a slant to Michael Thomas. You could run out routes to Chris Olave. You can run option routes or Texas routes to Alvin Kamara. And if you wanted to bring in more pass protection, don't have Alvin Kamara block, bring in an extra tight end or lineman or something like that. You've done that before. Bring it, go into your jumbo package or shotgun jumbo package. So that's maybe one thing you could have done. If If I was calling the plays... From first down to fourth down. First down, I'd probably take a shot to the end zone simply because I feel like you probably should. I wasn't mad at taking a shot to the end zone. Okay, second down, I'm like, if they're showing blitz, if they're in main coverage, trying to hit Mike over the middle for a slant or a dig route or a crossing route or get Olave on an out route, that kind of thing. Just kind of pick up some yardage, maybe set up third and manageable if you can get the first down, great. I would have hit Thomas on a slant, Olave or on an out route. If you saw the 49ers ending to the game, that's what they did. The Browns were bringing pressure. They're in man coverage. They got Ayuk and some guys on some quick out routes and stuff. And they were able to pick up first downs and get some yardage and just kind of keep the chains moving. Okay. 
third down and what two you could probably probably run another you could probably maybe run it i wouldn't i'd probably throw a slant to michael thomas it's a cheat code play say that gets a first down now it's first and goal or whatever it is now you take shots to the end zone you don't have timeouts that's when you start taking shots at end zone not first down and 10 40 seconds left in the game and you have a timeout from the like 25 yard line you got to be able to get first downs and not just go straight for the end zone and i don't know that's that's just personally what i would do if i was calling plays um but like i mentioned earlier uh this wasn't pretty maybe the saints make a change maybe they don't i don't think we'll see it this week maybe after the jags game but um if you honestly want to know how I feel about this team right now, I feel nothing. I've emotionally detached myself from this from this team. If they win, awesome. But if they lose, I'm not going to let it ruin my day simply because the, these past two years have just kind of prepared me for it. The 21 season was brutal injury-wise. The last season was pretty brutal injury and just overall everything just sucked ass. So all of that prepared me for basically any loss the Saints. All those playoff losses, all those heartbreakers have brought me to this moment to where I'm not going to let it bother me if they win awesome but if they lose okay I'll just keep watching football and record podcasts and stuff like that for for the rest of the day I'm not going to let it mess up my mood so if you enjoyed this episode make sure you hit that like button subscribe and I'll see you guys oh the Saints play Thursday I don't know when I'll see you guys but we'll probably be looking at the film I'll try and get that one out as quickly as possible will be hard with the classes and everything else, but we will get that out before Thursday's game, and then we'll have to preview Thursday's game. So I'll see you guys, I guess, in the next day or two, two, three days, and uh, yeah. Yeah.